and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. Thank you for coming to my channel. So I'm going to go through another paper six and focus on the modeling section. From my experience as an IGCC teacher for many years, this is the area of the examination that pupils struggle with the most. So I'm gonna make this a focus of mine going through the paper six modeling section. Okay, hope you enjoy. Okay, welcome to my paper six masterclass, paper six walkthrough, where I'm gonna go through the June 2019 paper six. Uh, this is um, version three, and I'm gonna look at the modeling part. So this is the paper that you can see right in front of you. So this is the exact paper I'm going to look at, 0607, and we're going to look at part B, so the second half of the paper. Before I start, if you like this content and I've been asked about paper six in particular, then please like and please subscribe. It makes a lot of difference to that YouTube algorithm. So thank you if you do like or subscribe. All right, let's get started. So this one's based on play tents and this task is all about maximizing the volume of a tent for a given area of material. So we're gonna be using our GDC most likely. So a company makes play tents for children and in the shape of cuboids, like so, or square-based pyramids. And the top and the sides of the tents are made from the material. This is very important for later on. No material is used for the base. So we do not count the base as part of the total surface area. The cuboid tent has a square base of side X meters that we're given here, and a height of H meters. We want to write down the volume. So remember the volume of any cuboid is length times width times height. So it's going to be X times X times H. And we know that X times X is going to be equal to X squared. And remember in good algebra, we don't need to write the times there. We just put the letters together. So the volume of this cuboid is X squared h. Always a nice to have a warm-up question like that. The next part of the question is it shows the total area of material use and not including the bottom is equal to this expression. So the way I would do this is I'd actually work out each of the individual faces I need to work out. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch where this is x, this is x, and this is h. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the top of my tent. So the top of my tent, well, that's going to be equal to x times x. That's going to be x squared. And now I'm going to think about the other faces. So I'm going to think about, and let's color code this. So the blue face here, the blue face here, the one that we can't see over here, and the one at the back and they're all gonna have the same dimensions because this front face here is X times H, and then we have one at the back as well. And if we consider the sides, we have also X times H, and then this one over here. So how many sides are in blue? Well, one, two, three, four. What's the area of one particular face? Well, that's going to be X times H. So we have, or hx, we can do it the other way around. So h times x is one side. How many sides do we have? One, two, three, four. So we put four in like so. Remember, we are not mentioning the bottom because there is no canvas for the bottom. So we get x squared for the top face, but all the other faces are going to have the dimension x times h. So we get our expression. So far, reasonably normal with volume and surface area. This part is a bit more tricky. So the company uses eight square meters of material to make each cuboid tent. And using the two answers we got before, we need to work out the model for the volume can be written like this. So the first thing I've noticed when looking at this formula is we've got lots of X's, but there's no H in our formula, no H. So that serves as a trigger for, well, I need to write H in terms of X. Yeah, I'm not allowed to have an H in my final formula. So if we go back 
to this formula here. The total surface area of the tent here, let me write it up here, so A was equal to x squared plus 4hx, or xh. Now we're told some extra information in this question, which is the company uses 8 square metres. So we can substitute A for 8, because we're told this in the question. So we get 8 equals x squared plus 4hx. At this step, we've now got a formula in terms of h and x, and we need to make h the subject. So we can do h equals something with x. The way we do this is a straightforward changing the subject kind of operation. So we minus x squared from both sides. That gives us then 8 minus x squared equals 4hx. And now we want to get h on its own. So what's the opposite of timesing by 4 and x? Well, it's going to be dividing by 4 and x. So if I do that, I then get 8 minus x squared over 4x is equal to h. And I get what I want which was I get h in terms of x. So we've used part b of the previous question. Now what we're going to do is take the volume formula, which, if you recall, was v equals x squared h. And now I can replace the h with this expression. So I write then x squared, open brackets, 8 minus x squared over 4x. So let's simplify this together. So I get x squared. Remember, this is the same as x squared over 1, if you want to think of it that way. 8 minus x squared over 4x. We're so close to this formula here, but we can cancel an x top and bottom. We're allowed to do this. So we're going to cross an x out here. We're going to remove an x from here. And then we get the formula that's desired, which is x, open brackets, 8 minus x squared over 4, which is exactly what we wanted. I've just got the x at the front rather than the back, but it is an equivalent formula. Now, if that was slightly confusing, that's absolutely fine. Do go back, rewind, work through it again. Like that's the great thing about these videos. You can watch this as many times as you like. And what I found with paper sixes as well is that the mark scheme is not very helpful in showing you how to get there. So really do go through this if this is slightly on the confusing side. Now we're going to take this formula, so even if we got part C wrong, we can still use that formula for the next question. But what it wants us to do is it wants us to sketch the graph of this model, and these are the axes that we need to use. As soon as you see a sketch the graph question on the paper six, this usually means using your GDC. So let's have a look. So we are going to use our GDC, Make sure it's in graph mode. You can do this by pressing on, new, and add graph. And we're going to type in this function. So we go control and divide to give us a fraction. We do bracket 8 minus x squared. x. Now I'm going to put times by x just to make sure calculator knows what I want to do. And on the bottom is 4. Press enter, and then we get uh, the graph that we're looking for. But this is what's really important about looking at the question. Notice it wants the x scale between 0 and 3. So we go to menu, we go to window and window settings, and we need to change the x axis between 0 and 3. And now we get the graph that we desire. 
Okay, so we need to sketch this. Now, even though uh, one of my pupils asked me this, uh, how do I know how much detail to put? Well, whenever you get a sketch to graph question, you should label anywhere where it crosses an X or Y axis. Now we can see that it crosses the uh, origin here, but we may need to know this coordinate here for our sketch. So I go to menu, analyze graph and zeros. That tells me where it crosses the X axis. I click before and click after. And it gives me approximately 2.83 to three significant figures. So when I draw my sketch, this is the important part here. So I'm going to draw my curve, but I need to make sure that when I cross the x-axis, I cross before the three, because I know this is 2.83, approximately to three significant figures. So whenever you do a sketch, generally speaking, label the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, okay, just to make sure you get all the marks. And we'll look at the mark scheme. Actually, I'll look at the mark scheme now for you. And you'll see, here's your correct sketch. You only get one mark for this, but just to make sure, in case it's a two-mark question, I would label this. It's good practice to do such a thing. Okay. Uh, the next part of the question wants to find the maximum volume. So what we're going to do here is we're looking for the maximum, okay, which I'm going to label approximately here. So the way we find the maximum is we go back to our GDC. We know it's roughly around here. We click on Menu. We click on Analyze Graph. We click on Maximum. And we click before the maximum. We click after the maximum. Okay, and then we're going to read off our value. Okay, now notice that we want the maximum volume of the cuboid tent. So we're not looking for the x coordinate here, but we're looking for the y coordinate because you want the volume of the entire cuboid tent. Yeah, you want the function v, which in this case is our y. So you actually want the y value here. The great thing about this, you can actually move it around. So we want then this value here, 2.177, which as a standard thing, you want to put this always to three significant figures. So it's going to be 2.18. Okay, and this is going to be cubic meters because we're looking for a volume. Okay, which they don't ask for the correct units, but again, if you want a standard procedure, you want to make sure you have that there. Okay, on to part E. So customers want to buy tents with a height of at least one meter. So using your part answer to part A, sketch on the axes above the graph of V against X when H equals one. Again, this is a nonlinear paper. We often have to work backwards through the problem. So to remind you from part A, our formula was V equals X squared H. So I'm gonna write this down. V equals X squared H. Now we're told h is equal to 1, so our volume is going to be equal to just x squared. Okay, so using your answer to part A, sketch on the axes above, so we need to go back to the previous question, the graph of v against x when h is 1. Well, this is just going to be a parabola, so remember y equals x squared, which is what we generally work with. Okay, it's just going to be the parabola, and we're going to look at the positive axes. Um, if you're not sure about that, you can always go back to your GDC, press tab, it's a really good function here, you press the tab button, and you can create your second function, which is going to be x squared, and it will look like this. So if you're not sure about what y equals x squared looks like, put it into your GDC, and then we're going to draw a sketch onto our part here. So I'll use a different color. So it will look like this. Notice the parabola goes up before the maximum point. So do make sure you're accurate with doing this. And as you see on the mark scheme, again, they're just looking for the general shape. And then the final part of this question, we need to find the volume of a cuboid tent made from eight meet square meters of material with a height of one meter. So what they're asking for is essentially 
the intersection point because the, the intersection point we know it has a surface area of 8 square meters and we know the volume is equal to x squared so we know it answers the question a reminder how you find the intersection point is I'm just going to drag this out the way just so you can see where we're looking for we go to menu analyze graph intersection we click before we click afterwards okay and then we get our value here which we're just going to move across and we're looking for let's just check the question carefully we're looking for the y value okay how do I know I'm looking for the y value because the question is asking for the volume of the cuboid tent so it's going to be 2.14 cubic meters again to 3SF if you're not told what to do there's our answer there okay notice there is what's called a communication opportunity so you'll see that at a few points here see opportunity in the mark scheme likewise here see opportunity at the end of my series of videos on this I will go through first of all what that means and then what you need to write down in order to guarantee that one or two extra marks for good communication throughout this paper okay so that's question one okay so I'm gonna stop at this point okay keep an eye on my YouTube channel because I will then put the second part of this modeling paper on there again reminder please like and please subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.